I'm delighted to say that we're going to be joined by Adam Price, who's Director of Solution Marketing at Ford Rock, and Stephen Jones, who's the Director of Consulting at Ensono, to answer that for us. Big questions. A big round of applause, please. <laughs> Because these guys are going to take over because I think this is where I do my discreet, subtle exit. So pay attention, everybody. These guys are hot. Go for it. Oh, yes. The clicker would help. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, well, good afternoon uh, to everybody. Uh, thank you for having us. It's, it's a pleasure. And I've got to say, the previous panel has really set up our conversation. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the very important topic of how digital identity can help to elevate um, um, kind of policyholder experience and also drive customer, um, um, uh, customer experience and trust. Um, so my name is Adam Price. Um, I'm Fordrock. Fordrock, for those of you who don't know, is a leading digital identity provider. We've been around for around 13 years in the marketplace, and we work with some of the leading insurance brands uh, globally. Uh, and I'm really glad to be joined here by my partner in crime, Steve from Insono. Afternoon, my name's Steve Jones. I work for Ensono, which is an independent global technology consultancy innovation partner and managed service provider. Um, I work in the software engineering consulting arm and we focus on modern application and data platform development, almost always predicated on digital identity. Wonderful. Well, Steve, it's great to have you uh, here with us. Um, and I've got to say, you know, it's really interesting having most of us in the industry uh, know that insurance is rapidly moving from a low-touch to a high-touch uh, interaction model. And actually, the previous panel uh, explored that in, in depth. Uh, I really like this kind of uh, idea that uh, Faith uh, mentioned around the importance of really being able to understand customer needs and customer patterns. Um, very interesting to hear about things like in digital vulnerability, how that's addressed. So um, it's really interesting as well. I was in the panel earlier on in the day, and. I heard Tarun call of uh, Swiss Re talk about the need to eliminate customer friction. So um, there's no doubt here that this is a very pertinent topic. But Steve, let's get into it. I'm, I'm kind of keen to get your, your view really on what the top three drivers for digital transformation and insurance are. Okay, I think the fundamental um, objective of digital transformation is often efficiency. So it's reducing capital strain across the business. The idea is by reducing operating costs, you are going to be able to bolster margins and remain competitive on price. Um, we see a lot of process re-engineering, service thinking, all these topics focused on introducing automation, more self-service, and therefore reducing the cost to operate the business. The other one I think is important is agility. Um, we see insurers need to introduce new product lines, they need to introduce them across low friction channels um, in order to meet customers' expectations. So that's um, components like usage-based insurance, as mentioned by the panel, IoT devices and wearables, new products that are also in line with emerging risks that are almost unprecedented, so pandemics, climate and flood, electric vehicles and cyber aren't really that well understood historically. Transformations try to, to understand how to price that effectively and they need to be model driven rather than experience driven. So that's efficiency, agility, and the other one, the key one of course, is customer expectations are driving customer experience. <coughs> Big tech, the device orientated, phone orientated experiences that we're all familiar with have really raised the bar I use an Apple phone, I shop on Amazon, I have a very high expectation of convenience. And I think insurance as an industry is becoming more high touch, as you said, and more, more touch points, more involvements really require lower friction to, to improve the loyalty and the retention and to remain relevant and to raise your head above the, the real difficult pricing market that surrounds consumer lines in particular. By the sounds of it, Steve, there's a kind of a back-end challenge, if you will, and a front-end challenge. Back-end meaning the tech in the back that facilitates how insurance create products, price products, and handle risk. And then a front-end component of how you deliver that seamlessly to customers. And it's really interesting. You can see one stat here on the, on the, on the slide behind us. I came across this on my recent research, and I was staggered by it to think that 60% of insurance providers globally do not have a CX strategy. 
I mean, I think that speaks volumes to what the previous panel was talking about and the need for that front-end kind of focus, yeah. uh, which is really, really fascinating. And so to that end, to get you a little bit interactive before, before the lunch hour, we've got a little Slido. So we wanted you to ask you this fundamental question, really. Um, for many of you in the insurance sector, what's the biggest customer experience challenge that you are facing? So feel free to pick up your phones, scar the QR code, or to put in the, the slider number here. Just put in anything that comes to mind. Don't overthink it, put it in. We really want to bake that into our, into our discussion. So we'll give you a couple of minutes to, to do that as you get your phones out. I'm waiting for the first response to come in. This is always the, <laughs> the most exciting moment. You can see five participants are writing right now. So uh, we do have engagement, which is great this lunch hour. There we go. Limited, support, channels, resource, increasing demand, lack of end-to-end -end customer journey. That's fundamentally important, isn't it? Yes. What else do we have? Resource, increasing. Don't remember where my policy docs are. Wow, I felt that one before. That is, that is a common pain as a, as a, as a policy holder. So this is really fascinating. There's more people are typing in, so we'll give it a couple more seconds. Lack of interest. Well, that's, that's really interesting. In the morning panel, um, uh, I, I heard a lot of conversation there talking about, hey, people who buy insurance are not buying it because they're excited by it, right? We're not buying our next car or buying our next package holiday. Yeah. So reducing that customer friction is really important for a product that is a necessity, is not really something that you know, is, is a motive for, for consumers. Yeah, someone very clever once said to me, insurance is never bought, it's sold. It's, it's an obligation. We, it's very difficult to elevate the experience of something that we have to have. And the trust, I think, is an ages old issue for, for insurers. It's easy to lose trust if you, if you lose, if you've breached in the data that you have, but it's so hard to gain. And this is an industry that's predicated on understanding a lot about its customers, often sensitive and health information in order to, to price and write a policy effectively. It's, it's a difficult industry to build trust in. And this is where exactly where we get into identity in a second, I'll promise. Um, this is really where identity comes in, right? Because identity helps to build that trust. There are component, multiple components of identity. One of them is to protect customers, protect their data. But another one's also about giving customers and empowering them the ability to be in control of that data. Um, so I think that speaks volumes to what you said here. There, there is one here. I'll get, gosh, people are still, I think people have uh, finished uh, voting. We see process in the middle. But there was one that's really interesting for me here. No single view of customer. Are we going to get into that? So, uh, Steve, with that, let's think about how customer trust, transformation, and identity interrelate. What's your view on that? So many of those key drivers around transformation I mentioned um, are involved in, in improving trust, particularly the, the consumer customer experience pieces. It's so difficult for a year one policyholder to build the trust they need in order to, to renew in year two because they will always be attracted by the prices they see in the PCWs, the top result, and if they don't claim, they may not have much of a, a relationship. But that, I think, is, is a real key focus for the year one of any policyholder experience is to try and build that trust up. I think digital identity supports that because you can, first of all, you need to secure that data, you need to ring fence the credentials, keep them away from all the information you need to price policies and, and underwrite risk but also it gives you the, the freedom to integrate across many systems, breaking down the silos historic within organizations to enable the dynamic pricing models, the usage-based models, uh, wearables, IoT devices, the things that increase stickiness for customers. Sky Protect is a reasonably recent offering from not a traditional insurer, but a convenience um, service for their own customers is generally a sticky service. It's not, the reviews aren't great yet, but they'll, I'm sure they'll work out the technology. But you get a load of home kit devices, uh, cameras, motion sensors, and you bundle that into a two-year deal for your home and contents insurance. And it's sticky because if you cancel, you lose the kit. So digital identity 
is necessary, it's critical to tie all those things together, tie those devices, tie the experience, sorry, tie the identity of the customer across all the channels, whether phone, broker or agent, or newer channels, digital um, website. And I, I really don't think it's an exaggeration to say if you, you cannot truly transform an organization if you haven't mastered digital identity. It gives you the freedom to change the organization, to change your product lines, and to, to build trust with your customers. I mean, it's really fascinating. And from, from my perspective of, of being in the identity access management industry, you've seen a significant increase and rise of digital identity up board agendas. Mm -hmm. You know, this is something that previously historically has been confined to IT decision making, but actually now, you know, you have lines of business decision makers at executive level taking a view of what they want to get out of their identity and being in the position where they're trying to tie that in with business value. So we're seeing a significant shift there. I think the other point that you mentioned there as well, if we look at the kind of back end of the, of the story, shall we say, of the ecosystem is, is that growth. So you talk about all those different stakeholders in that ecosystem who have to engage and interact. Securing data in that ecosystem, securing access in that ecosystem is also very important. So we, we frequently get uh, you know, a, 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 a lot of our prospects and partners and customers talking about the customer experience and then a workforce and the part, partner experience in the back end as well. So that's quite, uh, quite interesting. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Um, I guess I wanted to focus in, you can see this kind of rather complex diagram here. It seeks to kind of articulate the end-to-end -end insurance journey against some of the key identity use cases. And I think we've heard a lot today uh, discussed around this end-to-end -end journey. In fact, we've had that feature in our, in our POR as well. So if you had to identify the top three identity use cases that are really relevant to insurance, what, what would they be, Steve? Okay, I think API first initiatives, so all the, the multi-channel um, initiatives that insurers are looking at, whether extending into web chat, anything based on an app, anything that includes um, devices and wearables, they all need to drive through consistent APIs and they all need to treat the identity of the user consistently. And that includes all the marketplace plays, all the ecosystem plays, Sky Protect again, as an example, underwritten by Zurich, but published out through um, Sky ID, through Sky's customer base. I think the experience of open banking, what that's done to prove and to demonstrate is possible to secure APIs, capture consent and permission, and share across an entire industry, I think that will come into um, insurance. It already is. There was a mention of open insurance earlier. There's big moves in Aus Australia with the consumer data rights to have open insurance as the next step after banking, energy, and utilities. So an API-first approach is, is really the primary use case for, for identity. An identity platform, a modern one such as Fordrock, is able to secure individual requests and understand which user made that request and whether they had the authorization, the permissions to do so. So you can get really fine-grained control over your estate while opening up the ability to communicate across many channels. The other one, customer data, you mentioned um, the single customer view. So as businesses start to distribute their software and their technology away from what we used to have as a, a siloed computer in the back office into a bit of cloud over here, SaaS platform over there, some on-premise work loads and also devices, it's critical that a business is able to tie all the activity that their customers carry out and the behavior into a single platform through a customer data platform. And again, identity enables that because you can hydrate, you can capture identity attributes against each one of the touch points and understand in real detail what your customers are doing. That's really useful for building rich detailed cohorts of comparable customers so you understand their behavior and it's critical for a real-time view to, to lead to dynamic pricing and the usage-based models that come from that. Matt from the FCA mentioned or was asked around fair value. Pricing, as he said, is not the only thing, but if you can demonstrate dynamic pricing that changes based on a user's behavior, I think that's quite a powerful indicator up to the regulator that you are offering fair value based on what your customers do. And then leading on from that, it was personalization. 
the real-time single customer view from a customer data platform enables personalization. Uh, we did a study in Ensono earlier this year, found that personalization was the number three priority for policyholders behind convenience and price. Being able to personalize with dynamic pricing usage-based models is, is definitely a growing trend, as we all know. It's really fascinating that you, uh, you kind of uh, compare this to the open banking experiment, and it's, it's, it's quite evident that the insurance sector is a little bit behind in terms of the customer experience and that personalization and being able to build that single view of identity. But from my experience, when I started working in identity many years ago, I presumed the big players had it figured out. Actually, the bigger you are, the more jurisdictions that you operate in, yeah. the bigger the challenge, because you have a hodgepodge of these different infrastructures and solutions that frequently don't integrate, don't talk to one another, and as such, can't really meet the objectives that, that you allude to. Yeah. Um, the it's big, really, yeah, the bigger the risk as well, the GDPR and the size of the organization based uh, fines, that's, that means the bigger you are, the, the more risk you carry. Exactly, and, and also you mentioned uh, you know, uh, APIs, so uh, FAPI, right? Financial grade APIs, once the, you know, the preserve of the kind of retail banking space and commercial banking space, it's actually something that is really, really relevant to the insurance space as well, and that all ties into to identity uh, as well. Okay, Steve, um, so that's all great. So we've, I think we've understood the, the connection between transformation, customer experience, um, what's the link with business value for insurance providers to be able to embrace this? I think it's really incumbent on us as providers, as partners in that ecosystem to make that link with business value. So how can identity drive the business value for insurance providers? So I think it, it boils back to the, the drivers for transformation, the, the efficiency, the agility, the ability to increase loyalty, that's got to be the objective, to open new product lines, opening yourself to new markets, um, whether through marketplaces or just launching new products, and then pulling all that back into efficiency. Again, reducing that capital strain. So identity across the workforce and the customers drives unnecessary friction out of business processes, allowing for automation, improving cost effectiveness, reducing um, the pressure on margin and allowing for more competitive cost. It, it always has to be a value conversation when it comes to identity. It's so fundamental to the process of, of transformation and to the, the future of multi-channel digital business that it, it has to come from a value point of view. And that's, that's challenging. I mean, you know, working in a company that, you know, has lived, breathed and slept identity for, for a number of years now, there is a kind of tendency to always focus on features and capabilities. Yeah. And, you know, we always try to say, forget all that. That, that's not really important. There might be to technical decision makers and IT departments. However, we'll need to bake that and build that narrative around how it drives the bottom line and, and the business value. And I think those insurers that are most successful in that vein are quite you're successful at building that link between business outcomes and business value and then technology that they're leveraging to address yeah. that. So. And, and there is a security element. It's really important to help from a, an infosec perspective to the CISO, to people who, who are charged with making sure that a company reduces its risk profile. That can't be overlooked, but, but it really, to, to live and breathe the benefits that you get from identity, you have to put it in the heart of the work that you do to open the channels. Whether they're traditional channels, agents, brokers, phone calls for the, the vulnerable and people in digital poverty, or whether they're more modern tech channels that people are more and more moving to these days. Wonderful. Well, we could be here all day talking about identity. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the, uh, our conversation. Thank you so much for voting. Uh, we're almost out of time. I just wanted to say, if you are interested in learning more, finding out more, we've curated uh, a range of uh, interesting documents here that you could access by scanning this QR code. Or if you want to have a little chit-chat, do come and see us at Booth 7. Thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, Steve. Thank you.